today it looks like we're celebrating and we don't drink beer but this is left over from a party this summer but I'm going to show you a marinade for a turkey because it's still turkey time we're going to marinate a 14 pound turkey so I'm going to use all six bottles of beer so we have two cans of Bud Light put those in this, <laughs> this bowl um, The reason we don't drink beer is because it's like liquid carbs. Sorry, you, you people who love beer, it's full of carbs. So this is a full sale ale. I think it's... That's the fight song for WSU. I've got a couple of wazoo freaks in this house. Sorry about that. This is a great beer commercial. Can you just imagine some big football player coming up and just going... <laughs> so I'm gonna add some lemon juice, a, I would say a half a cup. I'm just guessing, because you don't have to be exact, but half a cup of lemon juice and a cup of olive oil. one small onion chopped and 10 cloves of garlic minced and I just had to put them all together in this bowl so I'm going to add that. Three. Tablespoon of sage and this is Pansy's creamy peppercorn and there's about a tablespoon left in this bag because I filled up my shaker and I'm going to use all of that. So about a tablespoon of creamy peppercorn dressing base. And that's it. I'm just going to stir it up and I'll show you. I'm going to put this marinade in bags because the turkey we're going to cut it up we're not going to try to marinate the whole bird we'd have to have a big huge bin to marinate it in so we're going to cut it in the same pieces that you would cut a chicken in i'll show you i'm going to be throwing a bunch of stuff in a pot to make um, some broth that we'll make our gravy with when we make the gravy this is exactly like cutting up a chicken only it's like a giant chicken. Got to get those right where the joint is, is where you have to cut to get it out. Be sure to sharpen your knives before you cut up a turkey or a chicken. And here's the way I sharpen my knives. This is a great little sharpener and it uh, doesn't take up much room and it really sharpens this knife. You know, I have a daughter that's squeamish and she wouldn't be able to do this. Uh, the only suggestion I have is get, get her husband to do it because men aren't as squeamish. They've probably hunted and gutted deer and ducks and stuff. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna marinate the whole turkey, but we're going to barbecue the breast outside and I'm gonna roast the wings and legs and thighs. So I'm gonna keep the bone in on the breast here. I'm gonna get the back off so it's, it can sit, in a, sit on the grill easily. So just this back is gonna make so much flavor for your gravy. So we're gonna put that in the pot. To find the, you got to find those ribs and kind of get in between them to get this other part of the back out. This was kind of getting kind of hard to get apart from the breast, so I'm going to use these scissors I got from Pampered Chef. They should work good. Oh yeah. Don't have to use these very often, but <laughs> nice to have them. Nice to have tools. Here's our our giblets. I wonder if these will cut that. Ah, 
Yeah. So I'll put those in the pot. We're going to add water to... I don't know what I'm going to do with that yet, but it's such good. I, I, I might bit roast it with the uh, legs and wings. So now I'm going to put it in bags. I think this one turkey will um, go in three bags. And I'm using Ziploc refrigerator bags, not freezer bags, because um, they're cheaper and we're just going to marinate for 24 hours in the fridge. So I'll put this So that breast takes up the whole bag, so we're going to add marinade in a minute. I think the rest, I think I need three bags, so I'm going to do a wing and a thigh. I am going to keep those that way. I kept the thigh and the, the drumstick together because it's going to cook longer and make more drippings. So if I separate them, it cooks shorter because smaller pieces don't need as much time. Now we want this to roast slowly. So we're going to divide up the, the uh, marinade into three things. I'll put my skin in this one. Okay. Okay, now we're going to divide the marinade up into the three sacks. You want the whole piece of meat, in this case it's the breast, to, to be, in, so be in there. That's good enough. And then when you're marinating and you put this in your refrigerator, you can be turning it, at, just keep turning it every, you know, every time you go to the refrigerator for something else, turn your marinade. This marinade really smells good. That's about right. I trust the Ziplocs, but just in case I put them in a roaster pan in case uh, something springs a leak and I won't have a mess in my fridge. So I have all the parts that I'm not marinating of the turkey in this big pot and I filled it with water just to cover it. And then I'm going to add like four stalks of celery, just cut up, and one onion cut in big kind of chunks. And I'm going to let this simmer like for hours. I'd say four or five hours. It'll smell so good. I'm going to add some sage, uh, about a, two teaspoons of sage. And of course, some Lowry's. I'll do um, a teaspoon. And then I'm just going to turn that on simmer and let her just simmer. This is going to be like a bone broth, and it's going, I'll use the liquid from this um, in the gravy. Also, you could make turkey soup with whatever is left, because you're not going to use all of this for the gravy. You'd have runny gravy. So whatever's left over can just be soup or a nice broth. It's about noon. This morning I barbecued the turkey breast and roasted the rest of the turkey in the oven. Now it's time to create my wonderful gravy. So this was what the turkey roasted in. And I'm going to add some turkey broth that came from the neck and the back. And now you heat it up. I've got the burner on uh, medium-low, and I'm getting all the drippings that harden and make this gravy the beautiful colored turkey gravy is. You want to get it all loose. The cracklings are coming up real nicely. Homemade gravy is, is, is so good. It's, it's got a lot of fat in it. But that's what makes it good. Now you see all these little lumps of stuff. That's some onion and some other things that were uh, with the turkey when it was roasting. So I've poured all the gravy into this blender and I can still see some good stuff on the bottom. So we want to get that. Look at that. That's what makes good gravy. I'm going to blend this for about 20 seconds just to get get it nice and smooth. Uh-oh, dishwasher man's going to be mad. 
Oh, well. So I'm going to put the blended gravy in my pan and I'm going to turn it on medium high. I'm going to use cornstarch to thicken this and we'll wait till this war heats up and then I add the cornstarch to cold broth before we add it to the hot. This is two cups of broth and I'm going to add two tablespoons of cornstarch. I may have to add more. You kind of have to play with gravy until you get it the right consistency. When it's cold like this, the cornstarch dissolves. If you threw it in hot, it would be mad. And it might ball up into lumps. You want to bring this to almost a boil, so it's simmering. So you, not a boil, boil. you don't want that, just almost boiling. And it's starting to steam, so that means it's almost there. I'm going to add a little Lari's to this. I tasted it, it's a little bit bland right now. And some pepper. That's fat that's floating on the top. That'll melt. Now I'm going to bring this to another simmer. All of that cold broth has to heat up and that's when it'll start to thicken. And that's when we decide do we want it thicker or thinner. If we want it thinner we can add more broth. If we want it thicker we can add more broth and cornstarch. You want to keep stirring because you don't want it to, to scorch on the bottom. And it just makes a smoother gravy when you keep stirring. I've been stirring about seven minutes and it's still a little thin, so I'm going to add some more cornstarch. And remember, you don't add the cornstarch to the hot gravy. You'll get big lumps. So I'm going to add about, oh, half a tablespoon and more broth. One thing you can do to make gravy so yummy, I can't do it because we don't eat butter, but um, to put a quarter of a cup of butter in your finished gravy, it makes it glisten and it's just so good. And you know how good butter is on potatoes, so it's really a good idea. 